In this lecture, inshallah, we will talk about the epidemiology of specific MDRO outbreaks in hospital. The next MDRO is uh, MDR Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a leading cause for, no for nosocomial uh, infections, and probably it is the most common uh, infection encountered uh, as HAI, a uh, costive organism. Uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa lives in uh, environment, so it can be seen on water or soil, uh, seen on surfaces, uh, on objects. Uh, MDR Pseudomonas uh, is defined as uh, organism that is not susceptible, which means uh, both resistant uh, or intermediate uh, to one of the agents uh, in three to five antimicrobial classes, and these classes including venicillin, aminoglycosides, cephalosporins, fluoroquinolone, and carbapenems. Uh, they uh, actually, about 5 to 20 percent of pseudomonas are meeting the definition of MDRO and causing infection. Uh, for the risk factors, uh, including frequent prolonged hospitalization, uh, ICU admission, people with uh, uh, devices, including drain, uh, immunocompromised patients, multiple comorbidity, and previous use of broad spectrum antimicrobials, uh, including both anti pseudomonal and non anti pseudomonal. Of course, uh, MDRO pseudomonas aeruginosa uh, can cause hospital outbreaks, and the symptoms will be. Uh, depending on the body part affected by pseudomonas, uh, the most common infection including uh, pneumonia, ventilator-associated pneumonia, uh, bloodstream infection, surgical site infection, urinary tract infection, abdominal infection. Diagnosed by positive culture, also phenotypic diagnosis, and disc diffusion automated susceptibility for resistance better. Mode of transmission, including both direct and indirect, direct by contaminated hands of healthcare workers and direct by contaminated surfaces and objects. And also additionally in only Pseudomonas aeruginosa, it can be uh, transmitted through waterborne uh, water. So it is one of the waterborne uh, diseases and can cause uh, waterborne outbreaks from contaminated water. So the prevention will be contact transmission, uh, prevention as usual, plus uh, prevention of water borne outbreaks. For the contact transmission, promote hand hygiene, implement uh, contact isolation or, uh, or precautions. Uh, whenever possible, place the patient in a single room with a private bathroom uh, and dedicated non-critical equipment. If common use equipment is unavoidable, then you have to clean and disinfect between patients, recognize previously colonized patients and flag them in the system, and provide education for healthcare workers. Uh, for preventing waterborne transmission, uh, you have uh, to ensure water disinfection periodic cleaning and maintenance of shower, bath, and sinks, because these, these are the places that have vapor of water uh, with uh, attached uh, pseudomonas, so they have been, they should be clean and maintained, uh, maybe replaced if they old and leaking. Uh, installing disinfectant, disinfection system and filters in the hospital, avoiding the installation of other potential sources for Infections such, such as decorative bowls and fountains because they can distribute the, the uh, mist of uh, water that has the uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, additionally, the preventive measure targeting uh, a specific infection caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, including the VAP, CLEPSI, CAUTI, and SSI. Uh, we can discontinue the uh, contact isolation for Pseudomonas aeruginosa uh, patients by having two consecutive negative rectal swab at least one week apart. Uh, the next uh, MDRO is uh, MDR acinetobacter. Similar to Pseudomonas, it is one of the leading causes for nosocomial uh, infection and 
uh, probably at some time it was the first or second infection in our region. Uh, it, it is also living in an in, in environment, so can be seen in water and soil and more commonly seen on the surfaces uh, uh, across the hospital. Uh, by, by definition, it is non-susceptible, which means resistant or intermediate. Uh, Acinetobacter that is uh, resistant or intermediate to one agent, uh, at least one agent, in three to six antimicrobial classes. For Pseudomonas can, was three to five here. Uh, the same classes, penicillin, amine, glycosides, cephalosporins, fluoroquinolone, carbapenems, and in addition, salbactam. Uh, it is one of the most resistant organism uh, causing infection in hospital. And as you see, 40 to 65 percent of acinetobacters are actually meeting the definition of MDR acinetobacter. The risk factors, including uh, risk factors for most of the MDR, all frequent prolonged hospitalization, ICU admission, people with devices, open drain, immunocompromised patient, multiple comorbidity, and previous use of broad spectrum antimicrobials, especially carbapenems uh, and bibracillin tazobactam. Hospital outbreaks can be caused by acinetobacter, obviously, and the symptoms will depend on the body site affected. Um, uh, common infection including VAB, uh, CLAPSI, uh, SSI, and CAUT. Diagnosed by positive culture, phenotypic diagnosis, and resistance is uh, determined by disc diffusion or automated uh, susceptibility testing. Transmission is direct and indirect, direct through the hands of contaminated uh, healthcare work, uh, contaminated hands of healthcare workers, and indirect by contaminated touching contaminated surfaces and objects. For prevention of MDR acinetobacter, it will include uh, those for contact transmission. Uh, including uh, hand hygiene, contact precautions, whenever possible, private room with the private uh, bathroom and dedicated uh, non-critical equipment of common use equipment are unavoidable. Then you have to clean and disinfect between patients, recognize previously colonized patients by flagging on the system, provide education for healthcare workers. Preventive measures also for uh, infection caused by MDR acinetobacter, including the bundles and preventive strategies for VAB, CLAPSI, CAUT, and SSI. Uh, we can discontinue uh, contact isolation for MDR acinetobacter when we have two consecutive negative rectal swabs seven days apart. The next MDRO is Clostridium difficile. Uh, maybe Clostridium difficile is not resistant to several antimicrobials, like, but it is placed with this group of MDRO because it is transmitted through contact transmission like other MDRO and also uh, prevented in the same way. So the pathogen here uh, is anaerobe spore forming means making a spore gram negative bacilli present in the soil and environment and it is present across uh, the surfaces in the hospital when uh, in contaminated area uh, especially high touch areas including hospital toilets uh, metal bed bands uh, commodes uh, thermometers and floors uh, spores of the cholesterol difficile can persist in rome up to 40 days after infected patient is discharged. Uh, and this means that you have to do appropriate cleaning, but unfortunately it is resistant to many commonly used cleaning agents and even detergent based agents do not eliminate as Clostridium difficile spores. The burden it's normal flora in two to 3% of healthy adults. Uh, overall rate is 2 to 3 per, uh, per 1,000 admission years. It, uh, it is uh, recurrence happen in 15 to 20% of the patients after discontinuing the treatment. The risk factors, including old age, prolonged or multiple antimicrobial therapy, this is very important, use of acid-reducing drugs, uh, including proton pump inhibitors and H2 blockers, uh, infected romate, so exposed to infected romate, recent or prolonged hospitalization, ICU stay, 
multiple comorbidity, immunocompromised patient surgery, colon disease, especially uh, inflammatory bowel disease, tubal feeding. Uh, when we said multiple use of antimicrobial, we have high risk antimicrobial and low risk antimicrobial for clostridium difficile. The antimicrobial that uh, that high, highly likely to cause uh, flaring up of clostridium difficile, uh, including the second and third generation cephalosporin, clindamycin, fluoroquinolone. Uh, low risk antimicrobials, including aminoglycoside and beta lactam uh, beta lactamase inhibitor. This slide show the major uh, risk factors for um, uh, cholesterol difficile and how it is transmitted uh, from uh, contaminated uh, bathroom uh, in, in, in those who do not uh, wash their hands and can transmit it to other people. And here is, uh, this is a slide that's showing the major uh, uh, presentation and complication of cholesterol difficile, including dehydration, uh, inflammation of the colon, severe diarrhea, serious uh, intestinal conditions, including toxic megacolon, uh, and uh, sepsis, sometimes death. Uh, it can cause uh, hospital outbreaks, and uh, the symptoms, as we said, it may be uh, asymptomatic other than diarrhea. Uh, with diarrhea may be mild to severe, fever, uh, colitis, pseudomembrane colitis, toxic megacolon, uh, col colic perforation, peritonitis. These are severe complications that can cause peritonitis, sepsis, and sometimes uh, death. Diagnosis either by, uh, by detecting the toxin, positive lab test for C, def toxins A uh, or B or both. Uh, uh, this can be done uh, by assays uh, or toxin assay, uh, like BCR or toxin assay. Uh, additionally, we can detect the organism itself uh, by toxin producing C. diff organism detected by culture or other methods performed on an formed stool uh, sample. And formed stool sample means the patient has diarrhea and the stool take the shape of the cup, uh, so we do not test uh, uh, formed stool sample. Uh, when we uh, see the onset of the disease, we can categorize uh, cholesterol difficile into three groups. Uh, maybe incident, when you have a positive uh, cholesterol difficile in a patient who had no uh, previous positive for more than two weeks. But if he had a previous positive between two and eight weeks, then it is recurrence. So uh, we will consider this as a recurrent infection to a previous infection. If, he, if the patient have a positive cholesterol difficile test within the last two weeks, we will not consider this as new infection and will consider it as duplicate uh, CDI or clostridium difficile infection. According to the onset also, we can, uh, uh, the timing of the onset, uh, we can categorize them into community onset, which uh, uh, diagnosed within the first three days of admission or healthcare onset after three uh, days, the fourth day and after. And a third uh, new group, which is called Community Onset Healthcare Associated, when the patient tested positive within the first three days, however, the patient was in the hospital in the last four weeks. Transmission can be indirect or direct. Uh, indirect through touching contaminated objects, especially the bathroom, the commodes, uh, uh, electric, uh, electronic rectal thermometer, and so on. Uh, and also direct contact by contaminated hands of healthcare workers. So for the prevention, it is contact uh, transmission prevention. Whenever it's possible, we should uh, place the patient uh, on a uh, um, uh, private room with private uh, uh, bathroom. Uh, if common use uh, equipment are unavoidable, then you have to clean and disinfect between patients, recognize previously colonized patients uh, uh, through screening and flagging, provide education for healthcare workers, 
since uh, colostrum difficile are very resistant to extreme environmental condition, we have to eliminate by uh, appropriate cleaning and uh, disinfectant of a choice here is the uh, household bleach, which, which is usually 5% sodium hypochlorite solution. Uh, and this can be diluted by water uh, one to five. So you add 250 ml per liter of water so to create a solution of uh, one per 10,000 or 10,000 parts per million, 1%. Uh, some disinfectants uh, like uh, glutaraldehyde normally used in reprocessing gastrointestinal endoscope that can be contaminated by clostridium difficile. So when to discontinue contact isolation for clostridium difficile two days after the patient uh, stopped diarrhea. Uh, and in some patients, Cholesterol difficile is continue shedding uh, after uh, stopping diarrhea, uh, and in this case, uh, uh, you should uh, continue contact isolation throughout the uh, hospitalization. That's why some institutions uh, routinely do that uh, for all patients with the positive uh, cholesterol difficile. Thanks.